because we have sinned against you. You have fulfilled the words spoken against us and against our rulers by bringing upon us great disaster. Under the whole heaven, nothing has ever been done like what has been done to Jerusalem. Just as it is written in the law of Moses, all this disaster has come upon us, yet we have not sought the favor of the Lord our God by turning from our sins and giving attention to your truth. The Lord did not hesitate to bring the disaster upon us, for the Lord our God is righteous in everything he does, yet we have not obeyed him. That is the word of the Lord. In this very deep and sober reading of God's word, I bring just a couple of words as an introduction to some of the things that God will be dealing with us here as we look at this prayer. I want you to walk with me just briefly in verse 2 of this chapter 9. Daniel says in, in this first year of the reign of Darius, who was the son of Xerxes, he says, I understood, I, Daniel, understood from the scriptures, according to the word of the Lord given to Jeremiah the prophet, I understood from the scriptures. In other words, as he was studying the word of God, as he was going through, it dawned on him that the situation, the circumstances that they were in as a nation at that hour were not, as it were, a mistake. They were not just a victim of circumstances. It was as a result of the fulfillment of Scripture. That's why he says, I understood from Scripture. I understood that what was happening was happening in fulfillment of Scripture. So that's the first thing that I want you to note, to note that God will always fulfill his words. God will always fulfill his word. Do you remember the words of Jesus? Heaven and earth will pass away, but not even an iota, the smallest dot that describes the word of God will pass away. It will remain. The psalmist said, forever your word is established in heaven. God will always fulfill his word. Uh, as always, please help me to preach the word to your neighbor. Just tell your neighbor, God will fulfill his word. Now, I want you to know a couple of other things in that process. God will fulfill His word irrespective of your cooperation or your non-cooperation. If you are cooperating with Him, fine. You'll be in His good books. If you are not cooperating with Him, His word will be fulfilled irrespective of your rebellion and your hard-heartedness. The word of God will be fulfilled. Because it does not depend upon you to be fulfilled. It depends on God who has spoken it. So for you, what you need to do, what I need to do, is to cooperate with God. Because
because come what may, his word will be fulfilled. So it's up to me to listen to what God is saying and to know he's going to fulfill it. So I better be where he wants me to be during the fulfillment of the word. I use the illustration. It's not one of the best illustrations, but you, you will appreciate it. You will appreciate this illustration. I don't know how many of you have had kiosks here in the city of Nairobi and um, the, in the former city council, now city county. Uh, they decide that when you have had your kiosk, which you have operated for the last five years, you are actually a squatter. And so they issue this ultimatum that in the next couple of months, please move your things because a road is passing there. Now some people, for some reason, they don't believe these ultimatums. Ah, to But then also the city knows that you will resist. And because they know you will resist, they choose what my brother calls the ungodly hour. The ungodly hour, that's when you are really enjoying your sleep. Two o'clock in the morning. And what do you hear? They call that the midnight hour. And they bring something called a boom. You know that guy? The bull does. Whether you cooperate or you don't cooperate, a road is passing through there. I still remember the thicker highway. And there are many people, I, I still, I was, I was laughing the other day, I think we were passing by, I swear I go to my home and I was passing there with my wife and saying, that petrol station, now we are, you know how the highway is. That petrol station, which used to be here, now it's down. There used to be a Nakumat. The people I talked to are ah, Nakumat. Did it go down? God will fulfill His word. Whether you are cooperating or not cooperating, would you tell your neighbor, God will fulfill His word? Daniel read the scriptures and he recognized something is about to happen. We are here in Babylon for 70 years. God said we are here for 70 years. And we are here according to the scriptures. Now I want to show you something else. I showed this to the first service today. And I hope you will not be surprised. But maybe you should be. Turn with me to Daniel chapter 1 and, and look at something rather amazing that, that happens in chapter 1 because that's really the beginning of all this. And actually from the prophetic perspective, this is a continuation. It, it is a continuation. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. I have to stop there. The rest of that is uh, available to you on the screen, but uh, let me just walk with you a little bit. Nebuchadnezzar goes to Israel and he takes the city, he surrounds the city, besieging it, taking control of the city. Now, the next statement is so significant that at that time, Daniel was not aware of what was going on because a little later you will see who was taken and Daniel among the people that were taken was in the company. So let's read on. 
And it says here in verse 2, And the Lord delivered. Now, if you, if you, if you just stop there, if somebody was reading this and they stopped there, your thinking would be, Aha! And the Lord delivered Israel from the enemy. Because the word to deliver is usually positive, isn't it? Listen to this. And the Lord delivered the king to the enemy. Uh, I want you to think with me. Just walk with me a little bit. Tell your neighbor, the pastor is asking for your cooperation. Now just imagine, the enemy comes. The enemy comes to take you. And the Lord says, you are here. Thank you. I have been waiting. Take him with you. Hello? The enemy comes to take you. And the Lord says, thank you. Ili kumboja sana. Do you know who is being taken away? These are the very people that God took from Egypt. These are the people that he promised that he will give the promised land to. They are occupying it now. The enemy comes, Nebuchadnezzar, who is described by both Jeremiah and Habakkuk as a terrific, horrible king who would slash people's necks. And he comes to Judah and the Lord delivered the king and the people into his hands. He simply says, you are doing me a favor. The father and the man. Do you know there are situations where you are in that situation not because the devil has worked it out, but God is so happy you are in it. Uh, hello. Did I say something to you? Yes. You may be wondering. This is a new year, so let me appreciate your message, right? You may be in a situation and you're thinking to yourself, this situation that I am in, oh Lord, save me. And the Lord says, Arakisha. And take him to your place. And when you get there, teach him a lesson. The Lord delivered Judah, a king, and the people into the hands of the enemy. Now, how do you pray? You pray, deliver us from? And the Lord says, I'll deliver you. I will surely deliver you into evil. That scares me. But, but that's not one. So I wanted you to see that because it's significant for you to understand the movement in this book. What is going on? And the reason why in chapter 9, Daniel says, I got some time, I was reading through, and I came upon the book of Jeremiah, and I never I uh, 70 years. That is how long we are going to be here. Nikubaya. And he realizes. And then he reads on and he tells us what he actually discovered. So let's move on and look at verse 3, chapter 9. And he says, when I realized that this is the situation, this is our condition, he says that in verse 2, in the first year of the reign, I, Daniel, understood from the scriptures according to the word of the Lord given to Jeremiah the prophet that the desolation of Jerusalem would last 70 years. That's how long it's going to be. So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and petition. 
petition, fasting, and in sackcloth and ashes. Um, when things are not going as they ought to, and for Daniel, when things didn't go as they were supposed to, Daniel did one thing. He turned his face to seek God. He turned his face to seek God. You know, when you read a little, a little more, I, I will be coming back to that. Um, when you just read a little further, I want you to, to uh, turn to verse 4 and, and, and follow. Just listen, we have already read that. I pray to the Lord my God and confess, and we'll come back to that. Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments, we have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws in verse 6. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, to our princes and our ancestors and to all the people of the land. Daniel describes the condition, the situation that they were in by elaborating the kind of people that he and his people were before God. And he simply says, we have sinned. But I want you to go back then uh, to the beginning of that verse and, and look at what what the movement. He says, when I, when, I, when I looked at what was going on, I prayed to the Lord my God in verse 4 and confessed. I recognized what my dilemma was and I knew what the answer was. I confessed. I confessed. Confession, the word confess, is a simple English word and it simply means agreement or identification in agreement. It's agreement or identification in agreement. In other words, if I pick his phone, and keep it for him. Like one guy who stole someone's radio. And when they went to court, uh, he said he was only joking. He only took it from his friend's house, took it to his house. And he was only joking. And the judge said, you took the joke too far. If I were to take Lucy's phone and then he discovers that I am the one who had it, if I were to return it to him, I will say, I am sorry, I took your phone and offended you by taking your phone. So I return it to you. But you know how we do it? Because here is the phone. If I offended you. Now, by taking Mugus's phone, do you think he was offended? So why if? Confession is not if. Confession is I took. I identify. I confess I took your phone. That is confession. Now, confession may or may not include
conclude a plea for forgiveness. You, you first agree. Then you can move to the second stage and say, because I took your phone and I offended you, I ask that you forgive me. But forgiveness does not precede, does not come before confession. Confession comes first. It's an identification, it's an agreement. Daniel agreed. Daniel identified what the problem was. He confessed the problem. The year 2017, even before we come to talk about elections, which we will talk and we will talk about that deeply, like we did in the year 2007, and my prayer is that somebody will be listening to what God is saying to our nation. Even before we get there, we must come to a confession. Tell your neighbor, we must confess. Confession means agreement, identification. That's what you confess. So, the first thing that Daniel did was to confess. But I want you to note something else. In this confession, we are hanging on there in verse 4. Before he confesses, he hangs on or he tags his prayer to the name of the Lord. Now, um, I don't know, maybe you remember, uh, maybe it was you, or maybe it was your son or your daughter. When children do wrong, and they have the experience, the last time I did wrong, I was charazzled. You know that word, charazzled? Okay, I was spanked. So the child recognizes things are bad. And the children who understand both the wrath of the father and the love of the father, they don't run away. They run and hold the father's feet and cry. How many of you discipline your child when he has held your feet and he is crying? What happens when your child holds your feet and they are crying? You may not cry physically, but like they say, and that's why some men get ulcers. Because they don't want to cry out. Because the child has come and held your feet. And they cry. What do you do? Finna must give the Lord to do that again. Because the child has a warm heart. And that's what Daniel did. He comes and says, We have done wrong. But he recognizes first. The Lord, the great God, the awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments. He's, he, he, if you like, he's massaging, he's massaging the heart of God with these words. But he first recognizes you're an awesome God. You're a great God. My dear people, this is my longing for this year. In this beginning of the year, that we as members of the body of Christ that gather here and those of you visiting wherever else you gather, that you would come in the very beginning of the year to a realization of we serve this great and awesome God. Because when we gain that understanding, it changes our perspective of Him and of us. That's where it begins. It begins by a recognition of who God is. You are a great God. You are awesome. You keep your covenant of love with those that love you and keep your commandments. 
One of the cries of my heart over the years as a pastor and in the several churches that I have been is the fact that occasionally, not always, but occasionally, you, you find people, oh, brother son, you find people who are basically nominal. Mukristo kwajina. Si Mukristo kwavitendo. You find that in the Church of Jesus Christ, we have men and women whose lives are not accompanied by a proof that they are actually children of the living God. Allow me not to give you any proof of that, but should you ask for it, I have a long list that I have come to recognize is because those people have not come into a direct confrontation with the great and awesome God. When you have that encounter, it changes your life. So that's what I pray for this year, that you would have an encounter with this God. Because Mukikutana, Ana kwa Ana, Uso kwa Uso, you will not be the same. You will not be the same. And like I said, I have illustration after illustration. Are you a little person? And then, I have been asked so many questions by people. Just recently, I'm talking to a friend of mine and I mentioned somebody who I considered to be a good Christian. And the person asked me, who did you say? I said, so, so. you mean he is a Christian? I did not want to ask what they had done or how they looked like to be misunderstood for not being Christian. Paints to God first this wonderful picture of who God is. I want to uh, I want to bring us to to a close. I, I do recognize that this is a heavy message, and, and maybe some of you are already beginning to get shivers and worry. But let me just bring us to a close. In verse 5, this is what Daniel says. We have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws. And then he continues on. But then in verse 11, all Israel has transgressed your law and turned away, refusing to obey you. Therefore, the curses and sworn judgment written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out on us because we have sinned against you. Now, you will allow me to as it were, collect everything that I have said and, and put it in one basket. We have sinned. As a result of our sin, which now Daniel was confessing, he says, God, you are justified. You are justified because it was written in your law that these curses that have now been released upon us 
will be released to us if we sin against you. So he understands where they are and he concludes, Daniel concludes, he says, the reason we are where we are and the reason it is the way it is now is because you are fulfilling your word, because your word must come to pass. And so I was, I was wondering, how does this relate to us as a country? And, and we seem to have a disaster from disaster to disaster followed by disaster in this country. And I was thinking to myself, you know, we should postpone elections. Of course they say that words derive authority from their source. So, you know that the authority that I have will not change the election. Alright? Uh, because those words we should postpone elections are not coming from a source that is authoritative as far as elections are concerned. But seriously, I was thinking, we should postpone we should postpone because somebody, somebody, and I would like to know who these guys are and how they calculate. I, I left mathematics way, way back in standard seven, and it formed me up until from four, and we disagreed. And uh, but but some of it was left. It was just some of it was left. So it is not everything that ever operated. So uh, you know how many countries of the world are there? 160 or 67, okay? Uh, how many people are in the world? 7 point, maybe point 3 now, billion. How many people are in Kenya? About 43 million. Somebody doing their research, they arrived at a very interesting calculation. And said previously, Nigeria used to be number one, then it became number two, and it became number three, and Kenya was way, 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 way down on, but now, somehow, Kenya has beat Nigeria, and it became number three of the most corrupt. <laughs> now, so, I did my calculation, Prof, I don't know whether I you're a mathematician or a scientist, I don't know. But I said 83 million, put them into 7.3 billion. The person you're sitting next to is corrupt. <laughs> Simple arithmetic. So I thought to myself, if the person you're sitting next to is corrupt, how can we go to an election this year like that? It will be corrupt. IEPC or no IEPC, it will be corrupt. You can mark my words if you can't read my lips. <laughs> that is it. The reason we are suffering the way we are. The reason the curses have been released upon us the way they are. Waiting for the rain. This time round. And you know we talk like ah, when they are like that. We are not like that. We are not like that. We are not It is not like that. It is connected. Because he said, I will release the blessings. Or, I will hold the blessings and release the curses. Remember, God will fulfill His word, whether you are cooperating or not. He will carry it through. So I was thinking, elections in 2017, we are number three. You 
had to be sure that the IAEBC, new IAEBC, will not be corrupt. You cannot be sure that those who are counting will not be corrupt. If we are number three, surely. Let's postpone these elections. On the basis of we are corrupt. Are you sure? If the president who was sitting here, that's exactly what I would say. Not mince words. He's a friend of mine. And he's my president. I would just tell him, my brother, postpone the election. We are corrupt. <laughs> I cannot be sure that we will have free and fair elections if Kenya remains number three corrupt. See, I'm just telling you, 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 i Seven. <laughs> they beat us. They beat us. <laughs> Daniel recognized in scripture why the situation was as it was. The first thing he confessed, he told God, you are a great God, you are awesome. I can only hold your feet because you are God who keeps your covenant, covenant of love, we have sinned. I'm not going to force you to say you have sinned. But if we are number three, I will not force you that we are number three. I'll ask you to stand this afternoon and just tell God if you know, if you know that this message speaks to you, would you just tell God, Lord, oh, I am among the ones who have caused Kenya to qualify in corruption to number three. When Kenya is number three, where are you? Yes. 
scripture, in the beginning, I will see your face. I know that I am a sinner. And because I am a sinner, I accept my sin. And I lay it at the cross, at the cross of Jesus. And I, I agree with Daniel. We have sinned against you, Lord. We have sinned.
Lift us up, Lord. 